even though we're surrounded with uh, dry, dead annual grasses, in the middle of it we have healthy perennial grasses just chugging away, sequestering carbon. The Marin Carbon Project is concluding a four-year field trial to determine the carbon sequestration potential of rangeland soil. Using a compost amendment and managed grazing, they are hoping to show that land management can increase the ability of rangeland soil to hold and store more carbon. If their results are positive, the world's 8.2 billion acres of rangeland hold immense promise for long-term carbon sequestration. The easiest way to get at the question of could we sequester carbon in our rangeland soils was simply to add some. Add some carbon to the system and see what happened to it. And the easiest way for us to do that was to put some compost on the ground. So we decided to put about half an inch of compost out on some rangelands, both in Marin County and up in the Sierra foothills. And then we followed the course of that. We followed the course of carbon in those ecosystems for the next, well now going into the fourth year. The results were, on one hand, kind of what we expected. Yes, we were able to sequester carbon in those soils, but they were actually much better than we, we expected. Because not only did we increase soil carbon by the amount of carbon that we added in the compost, but we stimulated a change in those systems so that they were actually able to photosynthesize at a greater rate. In other words, their, the grasses were stimulated to grow and, and absorb more CO2 as carbon than they, than they would have had we not added the compost. Our, our control plots that were not treated actually lost carbon in the course of the experiment. Whereas our treatment plots gained significant amounts of carbon, not only in the plant biomass above ground, where we saw a 50% increase in forage production, but we also saw a significant increase in below ground carbon. In addition, not only did we see an increase in below ground carbon, but we saw that carbon in a form that was long-term carbon. So the carbon shows up in different pools in the soil. Some of it tends to turn over rather quickly, and some of it sticks around for a long time. So we actually saw a significant increase in, in a, the occluded light fraction in the soil, which is carbon that's going to be there for a very long time. So it's very, very exciting results and, and actually much better than we had anticipated. So what, where we're standing right now is uh, block five of uh, several blocks on my ranch. And a block is made up of four plots. All of them, uh, all the blocks have a control, which is very important. All of them are grazed. And um, right now I'm standing just on the edge of a plowed plot. So we, we did a yeoman's plow behind me. And then on the other side behind there, we did compost only. The control is on the far side. And then behind me, beyond that white data logger, is the plow plus compost. What was really interesting is all of this has been grazed now um, to match the grazing pattern in the Sierra at our duplicate site. And it's a little different grazing management than I would do and have done on the rest of the ranch. But even so, this general hillside here was really trashed when we first started managing the property in 98. It was completely covered with weeds. It actually was one of the worst weed patches on the property. And through our management, mostly of grazing, um, and then the research plots, we've actually seen an overall improvement. Even, uh, even just the background of it is better now than it was when we first started managing this landscape. So management's a very exciting thing. You can change the whole situation. And it's really exciting to do management that you have some kind of information about. Grasses, if done properly, can be in a very effective way of just sucking CO2 out of the air and getting it in the ground in the form of the plant roots. Uh, for almost for virtually ever because until somebody comes along and disturbs the soil if nobody does that then those those deep rooted plants will will hold that co2 in the ground for an indefinite period of time until there's some disturbance that comes along so it looks like a sea of annual grasses here but actually there there are a lot of bunch grasses in amongst amongst this here's a, a example of a purple needle grass bunch grass you can see the kind of the size of the crown of this plant and the roots on this are probably going down roughly two feet to three feet deep. So the Marine Carbon Project has established through our research 
that there's an intact mechanism that's distributed globally that has the potential to remove all of the atmospheric CO2 we need to remove to get down below 350 parts per million. What we're cur currently working on now is the calculation of the land area required to do just that. So this is from uh, November of 2008, and it's from uh, plot number seven, or, or block of plots number seven, plot number 2A, at a depth of zero to 10. So um, each plot has nine samples to a meter deep in four different zones, times all the plots. We end up with over a thousand soil samples. And each of these then is taken carefully to the lab. They grind up, uh, they blend nine samples into one and then subsample it into a very small amount. And then they measure the carbon in it. So what we have here in my living room is the archive of all those soil samples so that if later we have other questions, we can go back into the original soil samples and establish other things. And um, it's a very important library at this point. We now know that this will work, and at a rate that's really exciting. And the, the big unexpected thing for me was that when you do put carbon in soil, it changes the soil, and it starts inhaling atmospheric CO2, and it takes advantage of that free, untapped resource that atmospheric CO2 is when it's below 350 parts per million.